Hello and welcome to the Scripture Takeaway. My name is Peace George. I'm your host. You know what we do here. We share the Word of God and great testimonies so that you can learn from it and that the Word of God will prune, prepare you and propel you into living a greater life for the good of the kingdom of God and for his advancement, the advancement of his word, so that you can know wherever you are that God is good and he will always be good and that he is God here on earth even as he is in heaven. Here with me in the studio is Lisa. Lisa is a fierce lady, guys. <laughs> this I this is ordained by God because you know what? When I saw one fierce lady, my spirit left, and I know that Lisa has a lot for us here today. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Hello. I am absolutely wonderful and completely blessed. Thank you, wow. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, to the, you? Welcome to the scripture takeaway. <laughs> this is one fierce lady, people. Hallelujah. Well, Lisa, um, tell us a little bit about you. And what's your story? Well, I am, like I said, a fierce lady. At first in my life growing up, I wasn't so fierce. Mm. I had doubt. And I didn't know what a relationship with the father meant. Mm. I grew up in a very religious upbringing. And it really hurt me so much so that it almost kind of pushed me away. And now we as the church, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. That's right. We are the ones that are supposed to be showing his love and continuing to bring others closer in a relationship with him. You know, and when we don't do that, we're kind of pushing someone away. And, you know, we have to be careful and cautious and have communication and relationship with the Father so that we can bring others closer in relationship to him. And so through the years, I've been through so many different trials. And I actually had written a book about it. Is it okay if I show? Yes, please. That really cool. Okay. It's called yeah. Fear. <laughs> I love it. Um, and if you think about it, okay, our testimonies are fierce. They're meant to be shared. They are a gift from God. And we are the proof that we are on the other side of those storms, those things that have come at us. And it's almost as if, you know, if we keep them to ourselves, I think it's being to me, I'm being greedy. I need to share what God has done because I would not be sitting here speaking with you today and sharing, you know, just how wonderful the, a relationship with our father is if it wasn't for his grace, his mercy on my life. You know, I didn't do this. There was no way that I could have ever done any of this stuff without his help, period. I have to invite the Holy Spirit to help me. I have to ask the father every day, Lord, lead me because I'll make some really bad decisions because out of my flesh, I can do that. But when we walk together with the Holy Spirit, there you go. You know, you're yes, going Lord. to have, you know, a relationship with the father should consist of, you know, a fearful respect. Not, oh, I'm terrified of him, but a fearful mm -hmm. respect. You, you adore, you look up to, you ask for advice. Any loving parent is going to give their child those things that they need. They're going to correct them. And, oh, trust me, I have been corrected <laughs> plenty of times, but that's okay. I needed it. And God knows what we need when we need it. Hallelujah. Better than we do. His ways are much higher than mine. And so um, I have been through things such as sexual assault, domestic violence, mm -hmm. self-harm, suicide attempts, religion hurt, loss of a yeah. loved one, addiction in the family. I mean, so many horrific things. I had an attack on my life where the person that I got a ride home from a teenager's party was an adult male who was drinking at this party. And I thought it was an opportunity to get a ride home. And it turns out that he had other plans. Well, wow. I have a praying mom. So mamas and daddies continue to pray for your children. They need your prayers now more than ever. And let them hear you praying over them and what mm. you're praying about them and the situation. Let them hear that from your mouth. Wow. 
My parents are saying that because my parents are agreeing with the word of God. We send our angels out to work. Okay. I don't want my angel to be on the unemployment line. Mm. You know, I don't want my children's angels to be on the unemployment line. I am asking the (laughs) Lord, our God, and you don't receive because you don't ask. So Mm. we need to continue to ask. We need to continue to speak that word over our children, over our own lives, Mm. regardless of what we see regardless of what is going on around us, especially in this world today, there is so much coming at our children and us. Mm. You know, we didn't have social media way back in the day. I have seven grandchildren ages 19 to newborn and three daughters. And so way back when I was growing up, Mm. I didn't have those things. I didn't have these different social media avenues where the news, every time you turn around, there's a cell phone taking a video of something, you know, and it's, Mm. it's almost as if uh, the world is trying to make us numb to those things that are going on and making it as well, it's just normal. This is the way it has to be. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. We can have heaven on earth. You know, we need to continue to speak those things, you know, by faith. So Wow. You're welcome. So I had a ministry for a while for battered women, survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault, and they didn't know it. But the way our ministry was, was you basically shared testimony because a lot of times you can have all the degrees in the world. People don't care about that. The people anyway that I had ministered to, they wanted to know, how did you get out of those situations? How did you how are you enjoying life now? How did how did all of this happen? And it was because I personally had to spend time in the word, period. Mm. You know, I did the medications. I did the therapist. I did all of those things. None of it worked. I did alcohol. I did, you name it, I did it. They were just a temporary fix to a bad situation that needed eternal healing. It needed deep core healing. And Jesus has to be the core of that healing, period. You can't convince me otherwise. Um, because here's the thing. I had ministered to one particular years. woman. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, if I'm rambling, please tell me to slow down because I get just so excited about what God has done. And, you know, and that's the way it should be. We should be passionate mm. about our that's faith. Right. We should be passionate about our relationship in Christ. Why would someone want what we have if we're not passionate? Does that make sense? That's right. You know, why would somebody want to serve our God if, you know, we're broke, busted and disgusted? Sorry. Mm. Yeah. No, thanks. (laughs) (laughs) I love you, Lisa. Come on now. So um, this one particular woman, she I had I had been ministering to her and she said, wow, I really wish I could have your kind of faith. I said, you can, it's available. It, my kind of faith in, is going to be a little bit different than your kind of faith, but it should consist of those same components, the mm. respect, the love, communication, you know, and a heart open to receive and ears to hear God's word, not somebody else's word, not man's word, because man twists things, even in his best efforts and attempts. So she said, well, how do you know that it's not, and this is a really good question. She said, how do you know it's faith and not mental illness? Okay. Very good well, question. Really? Yeah, yes, wow. it was a very good question. Considering where her background was, was from and what had happened to her throughout her life, she had been trafficked since she was nine and she was in her fifties. Mm. And I said, well, you know, that is a very good question. Mental illness will never grant you the peace that only faith can. Oh, yeah. Should I drop the mic now? Boom. (laughs) That's the truth. That was the straight up truth. And that wasn't out of my own flesh saying that, but that was the Holy Spirit sharing that with her, you know, because if you look at on the, on on the outside um, for someone who doesn't know what it's like to have a relationship with Christ, they'll look at you like, wow, they're crazy. There's something wrong with those people. No, that is faith. That is passion. That is the Holy Spirit letting us know that he's available. God promises that, that he would send an advocate, a helper. And what did he do? He did it. And he confirmed it in his word. And so I don't imagine the Holy Spirit as being someone that is like, oh, you know, boring and all of that. Yeah. I imagine the Holy Spirit being on fire and excited about people 
coming mm-hmm. back to the Father in relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, God walked with Adam in the cool of the day. To me, that shouts relationship. Do you go for a nice walk with someone you love? That's Isn't that beautiful? Mm-hmm. The way it should be today. That's right. So um, while I was ministering and I had, um, before I even started the ministry in my, they call it, I think, a baby Christian. When you're first starting out, you know, I, I loved Jesus from the time I was nine years old on. I became born again when I was 17, had no idea what that meant. I had one foot on a banana peel, the other one on a bar of soap, and I was backsliding everywhere. So, which means I was living for my flesh. I was a party girl. I did all that really crazy stuff. And, um, you know, I had my really began my walk when I started attending the church that I'm in now. Um, I've been for 18 years. And when I was a baby Christian, you know, that phrase to me is just so funny. So that's why I pause and laugh about a baby Christian. Well, it's, you're learning. You're learning about a relationship. Mm-hmm. You're beginning your relationship walk of faith mm-hmm. with your father. So you're you're new to all of that. And so you're learning. And and it's nothing wrong with that. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All of heaven mm-hmm. celebrates. All mm-hmm. of heaven celebrates and rejoices mm-hmm. when one comes to the father. It doesn't matter if it's been a day, a year or whatever um so when i was beginning my walk my true walk in a relationship with father um i had gone to go visit someone down south my father-in-law i was driving him down to south carolina we live in the united states and it was gonna be a long drive and i met this woman who turns out you know it was actually a divine appointment there are certain points in your life you could see them as divine appointments and i had an appointment with god and had no idea this woman had just been through a really terrible time. She had a family, her husband had passed away and she witnessed him through the months and time that had progressed through his illness. And she said something that really touched my heart. She said, if it wasn't for her faith, she doesn't know how she would sustain. And it wasn't God that gave this man a disease. God doesn't give you what he doesn't have, period. End of discussion there, look it up. So, um, but she had such a peace that was surrounding her. It was his presence. And I had never truly experienced that before. I didn't know, but I wanted it. I really wanted it. And so we're driving home from this event. And it was the first time I think I heard God speak. And it was, you're going to write a book. Well, wow. I looked at my father-in-law who was out. He was sleeping. He was sound asleep. There's no way he said that. So I keep driving. Okay, maybe I heard something. I heard it again and it said it's going to be about the women who are meant to inspire. Do you know what I did? Nothing. I did nothing with that. So when God gives you an assignment, he's going to be relentless. He's going to keep going. And so he did. And over time, um, I had started the ministry and the women there would say, you know, because we shared our testimony and they would say things like, wow, you should really write a book. You have so many testimonies. I'm like, if you think about it, we all do. We have more than one at least. And so I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't know that God had told me already to write a book. So uh, as time passed and I started going to a different area to do the ministry and I was in a soup kitchen and then my health took a turn for the worse. And while I had to have surgery and I was resting and recovering when I was finally laying still, the Lord downloaded this book to me and I'm typing and almost in a fever. And boy, I'll tell you what, it was just absolutely things that I thought that I forgot about over the years. And he gave me scripture. And I mean, there's so many different things, even while in the midst of writing this book, he gave me the entire chapter. It's called wander woman taking care of the caretaker. AKA wander woman. Now I always tease because when I was growing up, um, there was this uh, superhero females didn't have many superheroes on television. Mm -hmm. And there was this one, it was called Wonder Woman. That's right. And I was like, oh, okay. I always joke, yeah, I'm Wonder Woman, you know, that sort of thing. I even have a belt, I think, that says Wonder Woman on it. But this is different. Wonder Woman was completely different. God downloaded this. And I have a friend that she sat next to me while we were on the beach and seeing me write so fast. I couldn't keep up with what the Holy Spirit was giving to me. Everything was scribbled so fast. And when I was done, I read it to her and she was like, Wow, I needed that. I I needed that chapter like I need 
the Lord's word every day because that's what sustains me he is what gets me up in the morning he's what keeps me going during the day and he's what gives me peace to sleep well at night wow you know i'm Lisa, i'm here saying wow wow because i have a similar story okay and it's funny that my book is also fierce they actually call me the fierce igniter so wow. you're saying you're saying these things, and I'm I'm thinking, okay, God, like, how did we even meet? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, God divine appointment, divine yeah. appointment, because I have a similar story as to you know how I came about the book. It was me writing like a whole day, just downloading the way the Lord was giving me insights. But I just want to thank God for your life and your ministry ministry wise we also have so many things in common also it's funny because i started this praying ministry called the willful and wonderful woman and now it's called <laughs> the it's called the warrior prayer gym but we started off as the willful and wonderful woman and god is actually calling us into nation building and saying build the woman that's the assignment he's given me now he's saying build the woman when you build the woman you build the nation so we even have something we're doing on saturday that is the whole woman you know, so I'm sitting here listening to you and, you know, some parts of it feels like that's my story. But I, I, I know that, you know, whatever God does, he perfects it. I want you, Lisa, please, to tell people out there what well, you've said you've gone through so many things. And here you are, a whole woman, fierce. I like the authority. <laughs> In which you speak, you know what you're saying. You're sure of it. Do you get what I'm saying? You talk yes. about faith and you say, that's it, period. And that's the attitude. Like there's a whole lot of things out there that we're not sure of. So yeah. we need believers to stand up and say, you know what? I am sure of my father. I know he took me through and I, I'm mm -hmm. becoming who he says I am going to become. But I needed to talk to someone out there who's listening to your, your testimony of you coming out of all these things, all of these things, and you being this way, how did you get here, Lisa? Mm. How did you get to this point where you can sit and you know be this confident in God? How did you get here? Okay. Well, it took it took action. Hmm. You know, um, we can say, "Oh Lord, heal me," and He will absolutely you know, get to my heart because that is so broken. Because when a person, when a woman, I'm going to sing, say this to the women, but it's also true for men. Um, when a woman is strong in spirit, there is nothing she can't accomplish. But they have to allow the spirit of the Lord to heal where no, no medication, no therapist, no anything can ever touch. Only God can heal that secret place. I know that we as women, um, Basically, when we're hurt or there's something going on, um, we tend to keep it to ourselves. The enemy wants to isolate you. Don't allow him. Say this after me. Shut up, devil. I am the daughter of the most high God. Shut up, he devil. I'm the daughter of the most high God. Hallelujah. Right. He created me. And he knew me. He created me. He knew the plans and the purpose that he had for me in my life. And I want you to continue to say this. He wants me to know that he loves me. He loves me. And that he is here with me, that he supports me. He loves me. He's going to guide me. He's going to protect me. That he hears my prayers. He counts my tears. Hmm. And he is raising me up. He is the lifter up of my head. Psalms 3.3. 3. I mm -hmm. thank you, Lord God, that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Because mm -hmm. I am the head and not the tail above only and yes, never beneath. Yes. I thank you, Jesus, that yes. what was once my floor is, what's once my ceiling is now my floor. And I thank you, Lord God, that mm -hmm. you have turned back all that was coming against me when the mm -hmm. enemy was trying to shoot his arrows at me i raise mm -hmm. my shield of faith and i tell him again shut mm -hmm. up devil mm -hmm. 
I believe you, Lord God. I believe what your word says about me, that I am creative, that I am blessed coming and I am blessed going, that everything I lay my hands to will prosper, that I will not receive what the world has said to me and everything that I've been speaking negatively against myself, I now silence. And I will choose to look in that mirror and say the will of God. And that's me, my life, to be whole, to be healed, to be well, and to be fierce with my testimony. Because this is the thing. Somebody needs to hear what you have. Yes. Somebody is waiting in a dark place now, and they need to know what his word says over their life. And so speak that. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Lisa. Wow. Glory to God. You know, I like um, the Bible uh, passage that you talked about. The one in Isaiah 54, 17, it says, No weapon forged against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you now i like that you know you said those words those words are powerful as affirmations and confessions they're so powerful as confessions and it's funny that the bible says you are the one who will refute it you will refute every tongue that accuses you so what we tend to do is we say god help me help me to fight this voice but he's already given us the authority to do that. You That's will right. silence every voice that raise up to accuse you. And how do we silence it? Just what you did now, Lisa. You speak to the situation. Fiercely speak into the situation. Absolutely. Knowing that you have that authority. And this is so powerful. And so if you're asking out there, you're there and you're saying, where is this fierce woman getting her confidence from? Now you know, <laughs> straight <laughs> from the Father, the Almighty God. Wow. Thank you, Lisa. I love, I love this. And I want you, our viewers, to go over this video over and over again and listen to those confessions that Lisa made because she didn't make it out of her own flesh. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking through her. So if you're out there and you're struggling, you're going through whatever you're going through, go back and speak these words speak the word of god to that situation speak the word of god to yourself sometimes it's even our inner voice that rises up against us silence right. that voice it's mm -hmm. time to speak the word of god and be fierce when you do it it says this is the heritage of the servant of the lord and this is your vindication from me, declares the Lord. So you have it. You have that authority to talk to your situation and it will change. Bible says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome. Okay. Not some, not little, but all oh. oh. yes. the powers of the enemy. This is so good. Thank you, Lisa. So, Lisa, what are your last words to the people watching you right now? Wow, my last words. I usually um, have so many. So to condense it is to <laughs> yes. be, to allow the Holy Spirit to do a work in you. Because mm. no matter what we try of our own, you might have a little success. You might look like you have big success. But unless God is in it, there's no success. Wow. It's the truth of God, the Holy Spirit in us is so profound. What a relationship to have with the Lord. And I know I keep going back to relationship mm -hmm. because God does not care about, you know, decorations. He doesn't care about titles. He doesn't care about this, that, or the other thing. What he cares about is time spent with you with together him. with him. Absolutely. And when you ask him, ask him where, where you need to heal. He'll show it to you. But be ready because you will take some work. You That's will right. have to allow him to heal those. We all have that key, but we have to give it over to him and say, here you go, Lord. It's yours. Help Total me. Surrender. Hmm. I, can't, I can't do this without you, nor do I want to. Because there are so many blessings that come with that. When you allow the Lord your God to heal you, to open up your heart, to pour into you. And guess what? Are you hungry for God? That's great. 
Mm-hmm. You, you can always even get more hungry because he's going mm-hmm. to fill you even more. You know, you, he's going to expand that vessel that you are and say, here you go. Here's a supernatural download just for you. Hallelujah. That's Hallelujah. why it's such a privilege to be able to go to the throne as wow. his child. We have that access. He That's allows beautiful. us that access. The enemy can't have access to that anymore. So find mm. joy in that. Hallelujah. Hold on to that and know that you have complete access to the Father. Hallelujah. Enjoy your relationship. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. Your relationship with God is all that matters. I love that. And you know, the Bible says in Psalm 91, he who dwells in the, in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I have a funny story about that if you want to hear a little joke. <laughs> okay. I think, I think God has a sense of humor. Um, one night, my <laughs> husband and I, we always pray together as a family, my husband and my daughter that's still here at home. And part of that prayer is Psalms 91. And mm-hmm. the beginning of it is just like you said, you know, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty. Now hold on to dwelling and resting part. Now okay. we go to sleep and my husband hears my daughter going, help, help. Her room is another room from us. And apparently when he walks out, he just threw some, sh- some shorts on and they were inside out. He just threw them on to come out to the, to the dining room to see what was going on. And there were lights flashing throughout the windows. Oh, wow. And it turns out it was the police. They were knocking on our door. Now, we live in a very quiet neighborhood. We never had that all the years we've lived here. And wow. we've lived here almost over 20 years. And so my husband goes to the door and he's half asleep. It's around two in the morning. So he's rubbing his eyes and his inside out clothing. So but the police officer said, are you so-and-so? And he said, well, yes, I am. And he said, oh, oh, okay. Um, are you on any drugs? And my husband goes, no, I was sleeping. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> Well, oh, you know what? We're sorry. There were four police officers outside. Apparently there was a crisis and someone had said that they were going to take their life. And that's so tragic. You know, that is so tragic. Lord God, I pray that anybody is listening to this now. I I pray the Holy Spirit touch their heart. You are Mm -hmm. loved. You are worthy. God wants you to know that, that there is healing. Turn to the father. Now call on somebody, call your pastor, call someone. But don't take your life. God loves you and has a plan and a purpose for your life. Yes. I needed to do that. So mm-hmm. um, so my husband, they figure out, the police figure out that it wasn't my husband. He comes back in and my daughter and he come to the bedroom door. I was out. I never woke up. I never heard a noise. Oh. And so my husband goes, are you awake? And I said, well, I am now. What's the matter? He goes, you didn't hear all that? And so he tells everything that I just told And I looked at him and I said, well, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty. And I rolled over and went back to sleep. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, Father, we thank you. No, God has a sense of humor. I have to believe because he gave me one, too. He's so good. I love it. I love it. My husband was not He was not pleased. arrested, yeah. (laughs) Dwelling and resting, that's for sure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. That's a good one. I love that. And I also love that the Holy Spirit led you to pray for anyone out there who yes. might, might be planning to take their lives. Jesus loves you. He loves yes. you. And if you're also out there, you have this crisis in your life because I know that a life without Christ is full of crisis. And I just want to reach out to you today to say God loves you. You know, Jesus died for you too. He died for you. And he rose to give you eternal life. And I just want you to touch your heart wherever you are in sweet surrender and say, Jesus, I know that you love me. I believe you died for my sins. I receive, I receive today a new life that you give. You only can give. I receive your love. I receive your mercy, and I believe that I am yours now. My sins are forgiven, and I tap into the joy that being saved gives. I tap into the joy of the Lord. I tap into the joy in the presence of God, because I know now as your child, I am surrounded by your angels. I am surrounded, and Lord, I just want to thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, 
Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen, amen. Welcome to the fold. It's that simple. Yes. Jesus Christ made it that simple. He died on the cross of Calvary so that you can live. And he rose again. He conquered death for you. And now we have victory in Christ. And that victory is what Lisa has been sharing with us. The never ending mercy of the most high God. And now that you know God and you have him and he's your father too, you stay yes. in that place, abide in his shadow. Have that relationship with him, just like Lisa said. And thank you so much for joining us today. Lisa, thank you so much. It's been absolutely wonderful. One fierce lady. I love you. Yes. I love you so much. You and of course, thank I you. am going to reach out to you and, you know, we're going to work together as a ministry by the grace of God. I will be reaching out to you. Thank you so much for being a blessing thank to you. us here at the Scripture Takeaway. And to all thank the viewers, you. thank you so much. Until next week, we'll see you again. Stay blessed, blessed and bye for now. God bless you all.